will be in the book of Exodus, Exodus chapter number 20. Exodus chapter number 20 tonight. How many of you remember back in the 90s, it was one of those fads that kind of swept our country. Everyone seemed to have one, 90s, probably early 2000s. They, always, they had these little bracelets. What would Jesus do? Anybody remember those? Yeah. WWJD. WWJD. That's what I want to preach on tonight is WWJD. What would Jesus do? Exodus chapter number 20, verse number uh, 7 is where we will be. That will be our text verse. Um, if you're familiar with your Bible, you know this is where God gave Moses... The, the Ten Commandments. Man couldn't keep ten, so we get a whole lot more. There's, I don't, I don't know how many hundreds of commandments throughout the Bible. But they come down, we, we consider these the big ten, if you will. The only one I want to focus on tonight is, is verse number seven. The Bible says, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless, that taketh his name in vain. Let's pray, Lord. We thank you for the day, Lord. Again, we thank you for the opportunity to meet here tonight, Lord. We thank you for our church, Lord. We thank you for, for the growth, Lord. I'm thankful to see, I'm thankful to see so many out here tonight, Lord. But I'm thankful for the the, the spiritual growth of our church, Lord. I'm thankful that our our people want to have, or the people here want to desire to be here, Lord. They they desire to see you answer prayer, Lord. They desire to see people saved and baptized and to to follow you, Lord. We. I'm thankful for that, Lord. I do pray, Lord, that you'll be with us again tonight, Lord, that you'll fill me with your spirit, Lord, that you'll give us all ears to hear, Lord, that you, your, your word says, he that hath an ear, let him hear, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you would walk in our midst, Lord, that you would speak to the hearts, Lord. I have, I have no desire to, to stand behind this pulpit to, to preach your word, Lord, without you. Lord, I can stand up here all day long and speak, and Lord, if you don't show up and if you don't build the house, Lord, if you don't do the work, Lord, when we're doing it in vain, Lord, we ask that you'll be with us, that you'll lead, guide, and direct, and we'll be sure to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I don't know. I wasn't really big into church during the 90s. I was just a kid doing what kids do. Uh, my grandmother took me to her church for a while. I sit back there in color in a coloring book. Imagine that, a colorblind guy coloring. That's great. But uh, all I knew is, there was these bracelets everywhere. What would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? And I got to thinking, I know a lot of preachers, they were real against it back in those days for some reason. But I got to thinking, and this is, this is a subject I love to preach on, this verse, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. So often it, it, it amazes me that our society and our country today get offended at everything. I mean, we, you can say anything you want to, and then you're going to offend somebody. Homosexuality is wrong. Guess what? You just offended a whole lot of people. All these different things. You can say thing after thing after thing, and then they get offended, and yet they use our Lord's and, our Lord and Savior's name in vain on movies. When's it, when's it okay for Christians to get offended? When is it okay for us to get offended that they took, they're trying to remove the Bible verses off the monuments in Washington, D.C.? How they try to remove prayer and the Bible from the classrooms. When's it okay for Christians to get offended? That's not the message tonight, but I think it's pretty good preaching. They get offended over every little thing, but they can take our, our, our God's name in vain. I, I hate to hear it. I, it bugs me every time I hear someone use those words. But you know what bothers me more is that Christians, more often than not, take the Lord's name in vain. So many times, I'm not talking about saying words we shouldn't say. I'm talking about the way we live. The Bible says, uh, the, the, even God said, those which are called by my name will humble themselves and do all these things. He'd heal our lands. The question is, what's that name? We call ourselves Christians tonight for one reason, to be like Christ. And when we take that name, when we tell people we're a Christian tonight... And then we go out and live like the world, what are we doing? We're taking that name in vain. We're taking the name of Christ and rubbing it through the mud. And we see that so often 
when I say the word Christian or when you say the word Christian out in public, two main thoughts come to people's minds. One, it's either so overly used that it's lost its meaning and, and people, everybody's a Christian. You go knock on any door in Barville, guess what? They're a Christian. What church do you go to? Oh, that, that one down the street. You mean this one? Yeah, yeah, that one. Who's the pastor there? Uh, I, I don't know. It's been a little while. Everyone you talk to is either a Christian or, or complete atheist. They don't want anything to do with it. No, thank you. The second thing, and it, it hurts my heart that this is a thing, but when we say that we're a Christian, you know what some people think? That means you hate people, that you hate the homosexuals, that you hate the, the Muslims. We've got to the point where the word Christian in today's society is a hate thing. They think we hate. The world out now is in this, I don't want to call it a hippie movement, but they're all about loving everybody. We're supposed to love everybody. We're supposed to love all the things that everybody does. If you love them, then you'll let them do it. Homosexuality, murder, all these different things. Abortion. Well, if you love me, you would let me do this. Anyone ever heard that before? We, we've got to this point where Christianity is either everybody's okay with being a Christian, it's okay, it's, it's just another thing, or it's a hate thing. And that's not the way Christianity should be tonight. And that's what I want to preach on. I want to preach on what would Jesus do. If you'll remember back, I believe it was either around October, maybe November of last year, I had the opportunity to preach. Brother Paul hadn't become our pastor yet. And I preached on the subject, how close are you to Jesus? I preached on a few different people. I talked about the woman with the issue of blood. And she was close enough to Jesus to reach out and touch the hem of his garment. And, and all of her diseases were healed. I talked about John. I love I loved being able to, to compare people to John, who was so close to Jesus, he got to hear things that nobody else ever heard. He got to hear the very breath of God. Amen. The breath that breathed into our nostrils, the breath of life. Right. The very breath that inspired our word, our word of God. When the, when the Bible says, for every word is inspired, it's talking about God breathed. Well, he got to hear those things. He got to see things that no one else ever got to see. You know that he got to see the rapture? He got to see all this. If you think about Revelations, he wrote it all out, and he, he talks about how he saw all these things that nobody else has got to see. Why? Because he was so close. To Jesus Christ he got to see things and hear things and do things I talked about Peter who who was close to Christ and when he was hanging out on the cross it says Peter followed afar off he got further away from Christ he got farther away and he went back to the old sayings he went back to saying things he used to say the things he, he said before he got saved he ended up going back to the, the his old lifestyle he said I go a fishing you know he's a good southern fella I go a fishing and he, he went fishing, and he took people with him. That's a dangerous place. He got further and further away from Christ. But can I tell you something? Peter got right. And God used him in a great and mighty way. And then we talked about Judas. Judas, who was so close to Christ, who followed Christ, was with Christ for, for, for three and a half years of his earthly ministry, saw all the miracles, got to be with him, got to hear him pray. And he was, he was as lost as... As, as they come. He, he knocked on heaven's door, and yet he kissed, or he, he kissed the head door to heaven, and he walked through the gates of hell. Right. And the, the whole message was on how close are you to Christ. Can I tell you something? If you want to be like someone, the word Christian means being uh, to be like Christ. If you want to be like Christ, if you want to be like someone, you have to spend time with them. Right. This goes back to that message. How close are you to Christ tonight? How close are you to Christ tonight? Do you want to be like Christ? Do you want to be like the, 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 the one who, who died for us? Do you want to be like the one who, who gave his life so that we could have salvation? I want to take a look at a few things that Jesus did. What would Jesus do tonight? I, if we could just get back to that. If, if, if people would think about that, what would Jesus do? I think we'd see less shootings. I don't think Jesus would be carrying around sh uh, a gun shooting people. I don't think there would be all this racism, all the hate, all the, uh, the sin that our, our country is trying to legalize. What would Jesus do tonight? 
First of all, Jesus would love the unlovable. I think about the choir special. I don't know if it was this Sunday or, or the Sunday before last or when, but they, they sang the song, His Love. The Bible says, he proved his love for me when he died on Calvary. His love is a boundless love that reaches down and touches me. His love is an endless love that will last through all eternity. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful for the love of Jesus Christ tonight. I'm thankful that he was able to love the unlovable. I'm thankful that he was able to love people that no one else would love. I think about the woman who was caught in adultery tonight. And, and you've probably heard the account. It's one of my favorite accounts in the Bible. I, I love the, the, fact, the fact that Christ went up there, he reached down in the sand, and he wrote something. You know what I like? I like that he didn't tell us what he wrote. We, that, that's really good for us preachers because we can put anything in there now. Amen. I don't know what he wrote. I'm not going to speculate on what he wrote. But I can tell you one thing. I guarantee you whatever he wrote, it meant that I love you. Yeah. When he looked at that lady, that woman caught in adultery, I guarantee you when she read it, she knew that that person loved her. That's right. There was a whole bunch of Pharisees there ready to stone her, and he just looked around and said, you without, the, you without sin, cast the first stone. The only one there was, who was able to even cast a stone didn't have one in his hand. He loved her. He loved the unlovable tonight. I think about Peter. We talked about Peter. Peter denied Christ. He completely denied Christ. He, he, he told him. He told the people, I, I'm not one of them. He swore. He went away from Christ. What did Jesus do? He loved him. He loved him. He went to him and said, lovest thou me more than these? Lovest thou me more than these? Knowing good and well what Peter did, he loved him. I think about Judas tonight. Judas who betrayed Jesus Christ. Judas who... who traded in the life of Christ for 30 pieces of silver who took that 30 pieces of silver threw it on the ground and went and hung himself I think about Judas the one who betrayed him who spent all that time with Christ what did Jesus call him? friend when, when Judas went up to betray him Christ knowing exactly what was about to happen he just simply said friend he loved people what would Jesus do tonight? he would love the unlovable I'm tired of having this, this whole conversation with people. You're a Christian. Does that mean you're, uh, you're okay with everybody doing whatever it is they're doing? Or do you hate them? No, I don't do either of those. I don't hate homosexuals. If a homosexual comes into our church, I, I hope that we welcome them, that we love on them. We don't have to love the sin. The Bible tells us that. God doesn't love the sin. He loves the sinner. Your children. I, again, I don't have children, but... If your child did something wrong, do you, do you hate your child because they did something wrong? No, you love them. You're, you love them, you pick them up, and you care for them, and you tell them that's wrong. You don't do that. That's going to get you hurt. We, we we're supposed to love people tonight. There was a time after 9-11 where you could go on to almost any independent Baptist church and say, I wish we could just bomb the whole, whole country of uh, Iraq. And you know what would have happened? Everyone in there would have amened. They would have applauded. They would have hooped and hollered. You would have got more amens out of that than you would the name of Jesus Christ. And that's sad tonight. We're to love the Muslims. We're to love the homosexuals. We're to love the drunk on the side of the street. We're to love all of these people. That's what Jesus would have done. That's what Jesus did so many times. You know that every law on earth comes from the Bible, except some of these stupid ones. You know it's illegal to carry, put ice cream in your back pocket in Kentucky? It is against the law to carry ice cream in your back pocket in Kentucky. Where that shows up in the Bible, I have no clue, but besides the stupid laws, every law we get comes from the Bible. Every law can be summed up in two different things. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. And the second is like unto the first, love thy neighbor as thyself. You know what Jesus did? He loved people. The Ten Commandments, we're sitting here talking about the Ten Commandments. You look at it, it's broken into two sections. The first section is all about God, and the second section is all about how we treat other people. Love the Lord with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and all thy mind. Love thy neighbor as thyself. When we're going to get back to the word, when, when people think of Christian, they think, that's somebody who will actually love me. 
There's a lot of people, as Brother Paul preached on Sunday night, there's a lot of people who, who are depressed, they're hurting, they're out there, and they don't think anybody cares for them. They're, they're ready to end their life because they don't think anybody cares. It's our, it's our job as Christians to show them that we care about them, that we love them. That's what we're supposed to do. Brother Lee even pre or sang the song tonight, Joy to the World. He's been threatening to do this for, for a couple of years now, sing Joy to the World, because it has nothing to do with Christmas. If you look, if you read the words, there's nothing to do with the birth of Christ or, or Christmas time. It was that last verse said, and the wonders of his love. I can stand up here and preach from now until, until, until Christ comes on the love of Jesus Christ and never get old. Amen. Do you remember the day he loved you enough to save you? Amen. Do you remember the day he loved you enough to reach down and pull you out of whatever it was you were in? Yes, sir. I don't know about you. I wasn't a, a horrible kid. At least I don't think I was. But I had my fair share of sins. When I look back and think about them, I think of what Christ pulled me out of, how he loved me through all of that. Isn't it, isn't it, wouldn't it be great for us to show that love to somebody else? Yeah. To reach down and say, hey, let me, let me introduce you to someone who loves you no matter what. Amen. Jesus would love the unlevel tonight, but not only that, he would, he would help the helpless tonight. John chapter number 5, you don't have to turn there. John chapter number 5. I love, I love the way the Bible's worded. I, I think I've mentioned that a few times. I believe God did everything uh, decently and in order. I believe every word in our Bible is inspired. John chapter 5, I love this account as well. Uh, you know, I say that about a whole lot of stuff in the Bible. John chapter 5, verse 1. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and, the G and Jesus went up to the Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep, uh, sheep market a pool, which is called Bethesda, in the, or in the Hebrew tongue is uh, Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of import, or impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then after that after the troubling of the water stepped in, was made whole of whatever disease he had. And a certain man was there, which, he had, uh, which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been uh, now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Wilt thou make me whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man. What a sad, sad state. Thirty-eight years this man laid there, waiting for somebody to help him into the pool. Right. Every once, one, one time a year, this, this angel or the season, an angel would come down, he would trouble the waters, and whoever made it into the pool first was healed. Right. But he couldn't get there. And this, this it's, I find it to be one of the saddest phrases in the Bible. This, the impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man. 38 years, none of his family, none of his friends, no one there helped him to be healed. He has the potential of being healed of all his diseases and not a single person cared enough to help. Not a single person cared enough to help him. When the water is troubled, uh, the impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man. When the tr water is troubled to put me into the pool, but while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Jesus saith unto him, Rise, take up thy, thy bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. On the same day was the Sabbath. Jesus helped the unhelpable, or the, the helpless. I love, I love the story about the woman at the well. We're right there at it. Uh, uh, I love the story when Jesus said, I must needs go through Samaria. He didn't have to go through Samaria. He didn't have to do any of that. But he did all that for one woman. I must needs go through Samaria. There was a lady there who needed salvation. He, I must needs go. He helped the helpless. He, he, he went out of his way. We live in such a, such a selfish generation where if you help someone, the first thing they ask is, what do you want? What do you want? Or most people won't even help you unless you're, you're offering them something. Hey, will you help me do this? Well, what's in it for me? Right. No, sorry, I can't do that. 
Now, Jesus made it a, a thing to go out of his way to help people. He helped the lame. He healed them. He, he helped the blind. He helped the deaf. And I know we can't do those miracles today, but you know we can go out of our way to pray for people. We can go out of our way to give them a hand if they need it. We can go out of our way to be kind to somebody. We can, be, we can go out of our way just to simply be nice, you know, with that thing decent human beings used to do. We can help people. We can, we can love people. These are things that Jesus did. You look at the life of Christ. Everything he did was, was a matter of love. He said, all that I do, I do to please the Father. What pleased the Father? Loving people, helping people, doing right. He wanted to help people. Tonight, what are we doing? What do we help people? When we see people that are, are hurting, what do we do? Do we walk past them or do we go over and we just offer them a kind word? You know, it, it amazes me how much just a simple kind word can change somebody's day. Just, I love you, praying for you. Just want to encourage you today. Just little things that will make such a big difference. That we can do those things. We can help people in those ways. The Bible says it's more blessed to give than to receive. You know, we, I know it's talking financial and we always preach it in finances, but there's so many more things we can give. Amen. We can give our time to help. We can give our, 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 our time to just simply listen to people. We can give time to encourage we can do all kinds of things. We can give a lot. We can give emotional support, moral support. We can give them a hug, just a nice little hug, say, I love you. We can help out a lot of people in this world. We could help out a whole lot of people in our community. When they reach out, when they're having troubles, one, they should already know you're a Christian, so they should know who to reach out to. But do they reach out for you, to you for help, or do you turn them away? I don't have time today. I don't have time today. I don't know how many times or how many testimonies I've heard of somebody who, who would go up to someone for help. People tell me about their friends going to them for help, and they just simply said, I don't have time today. Can I, let, let's do it tomorrow, and tomorrow never came for that friend. I can tell you testimony after testimony after testimony of people who've done that. When, when, when it all comes down to it, what's more important than simply helping somebody? who needs it, to loving somebody who needs it. But last of all tonight, I didn't want to keep you too long. Not only does Jesus love the unlovable, he doesn't, he doesn't only help the helpless, do you know he forgives the unforgivable? Yeah. Aren't you glad that he forgives the unforgivable? Aren't you glad he forgave you? Right. Forgave you of all your sins? It doesn't matter if it was nothing more than just a little white lie or not. That sin was enough to put Christ on the cross. That sin was enough to have him suffer, bleed, and die for us. To, to go through what he went through. Knowing good and well what he was going to go through. And still chose to, to love us enough to forgive us. Aren't you thankful tonight? John chapter, or Matthew chapter number 18. If you do have your Bibles, I'd like you to turn there. Matthew 18. Matthew 18, the Bible says, this is Peter coming up to Christ. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how oft shall, I for, shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? Till seven times? Jesus saith unto him, I say, not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which, was, which would take account of his servants. And when he had uh, begun to reckon one was brought unto him, which, was, uh, which owed him 10,000 talents. Before as much as he had not uh, to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and his children, all that he had in payment to be made. And the servant therefore fell down and worshiped him, saying, Lord, uh, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of the servant was moved with compassion and loosened him and forgave him the debt. But the same servant went out, and found of his, his fellow servants 
which owed him an hundred pence. And he laid on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into a prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servant saw what he had done, they were very sorry, and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that had, he had called him, said unto him, O wicked servant, I forgave thee all that, uh, all that debt, because thou desiredest me. Shouldest not thou also have compassion on thy fellow servant, as I have had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth, and delivered him to the tormentors, till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye uh, from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. What a story, what an account, what a parable here. This, this man who owed his, his boss, we'll, we'll put it in modern day terms, this man owed his boss a lot of money. Say he owed him $100,000 and, and he was going to sell him, he was going to get rid of him, put him in jail, sell his wife, do all these different things. And then the man simply said, forgive me. I will pay all that is is all that I owe you. What it is? What does this boss do? He, he simply forgives him. He says, "Okay, it's it's done. Don't worry about it." This man goes out. He finds his friends, who owe him a little bit of money, hundred bucks, and throws him in prison over it, because he won't pay his debt. How often do we do things like that? You know, the Bible talks about two different seeds. It talks about a lot of them, but we. We've been focused on one in our Sunday school lessons and in, in Hebrews on faith. But there's another seed in the Bible, another seed called bitterness. When we get that seed of bitterness and it gets planted down in our hearts, when we won't forgive people who've done us wrong, it grows. It's a weed and it sucks every bit of joy out of our lives. It sucks all the pleasure out of living. And that, bitter, that seed of bitterness will grow into a plant of bitterness that will destroy your life. Jesus Christ, who, who had all reason to not forgive us, he had every reason in the world not to forgive us. All the sin that he had to become, all the sin that he, he became, he didn't just bear our sins. The Bible says he became sin, that we may be made the righteousness of God tonight. He became our sin, the sin that hung him on the cross, the sin, the sin that uh, took his life, the love that kept him on the cross was enough to cover all of that. As Brother Paul said, love covers a multitude of sins, and there's no greater love than Jesus Christ tonight. He loved us enough to forgive us tonight. Have you done someone wrong? Has someone done you wrong? Why not get it right? Why not forgive them? Why not go and try to get forgiveness tonight? That's what Jesus would do. Right. He forgave us. He forgave us from so many things. Think about all the things he went through tonight. Think about the crown of thorns that he wore. Think about the nails that pierced his hand. Think about the cat of nine tails that wrapped around him and ripped his flesh open. Think about the beating and the scourging and the mockery, being placed on a cross completely naked in front of so many people, the humiliation Think about all these things. Think about the fact that God the Father had to turn his back on his son because he couldn't look upon the sin. Jesus could have easily said, we're done. I won't forgive you. And we could have burned in hell for all of eternity. And yet, he forgave us and offers that salvation full and free for everyone, for anyone who wants to accept it tonight. It amazes me, the love of God, the love of Jesus Christ. It's something I can't comprehend it. I can't comprehend letting someone go free for, for killing their son, and yet God lets us go free, not just free, but he offers us salvation, full and free. The love of God, it passes all understanding tonight. What would Jesus do tonight? I can tell you something. He would love the unlovable tonight. He would love them. He would help the helpless. He would go out of his way to help people. And he would forgive the unforgivable. If you're saved here tonight, guess what? You are unforgivable. You are unforgivable. I was unforgivable when he saved my soul. 
and yet he forgave us anyway. Amen. Have you been forgiven tonight? Have you asked Jesus Christ to come into your heart and forgive you of your sins? Have you, have you accepted that free gift of salvation? He paid for it. It was his to do as he wanted with it, and he gave it to us absolutely free. He paid for it with his life so that we could have salvation, that we could have life and have life more abundantly tonight. Have you been forgiven? Every head bowed, every eye closed. Well, this is Brother Paul Frederick, and we just want to thank you so very much for tuning in by the means of these recordings that we're sending out, and I hope and pray that it's been a blessing to you. I hope that you will maybe take part in our worship services. The times will be at the end of this video. You can be able to view our church times, and uh, also uh, we are going to be changing the 1st of April uh, back to 6 o'clock on Sunday evening. But anyway, we want to just thank you so much, and I hope and pray that God has spoke to you through this message today. If he has, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, our telephone number and address is at the end of this uh, video, and you can begin to just drop us a note or uh, just uh, let us know how you enjoy uh, the message and enjoy the the part that God is sending out to you. I just thank God so much that he's made this available to us to be able to share with you. So uh, if you haven't uh, really trusted Christ as your Savior, my hope and prayer is is that you could just bow your head right where you're at, be able to understand and know that you're a sinner and that you need Jesus in your life and that you could be able to be inspired by the Spirit of God to be able to just say, Lord, God, forgive me of my sins and come into my heart and save me. And the Bible promises that he'll do just like that. The Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So uh, I hope and pray that if you made this decision that you'll get in touch with us or get into a Bible-believing church somewhere uh, local to you and uh, be able to just go up, make your profession of faith, and confess Christ as your Savior there before the people. But time is running out, so I, I beg of you today, please turn your heart over to the Lord. Come and be with us. We'd love to have you. Got plenty of room. And uh, I just hope and pray if God, we, if it's his will that you could come and be with us, we would love to be able to just uh, take you right in to the church family there at Southeastern Baptist Church. So God bless you until the next time we get to meet again through these recordings. And I pray that the Lord will just richly bless you. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hope and pray that you got a little more faith today. God bless you.